Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the second day of the online workshop on the SI in Fair Digital Data. And for those of you who were with us yesterday, welcome back. I'm Thomas Liu, Senior Fellow at the Agency for Science, Technology Research and Research, and a faculty member of the ECE Department at the National University of Singapore. I'm also the member of the International Committee of Weight and Measure. It is my pleasure to chair this presentation session on behalf of APMP. With me is my co-moderator, uh, Dr. Victoria Coleman. She is the section manager and project leader of the nanometrology department at the NMIA. And she's also the lead TC chair for APMP. Yesterday, we heard a presentation on the digitalization activities of the global data science community and the international quality infrastructure. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation and discussion and I was able and was able to identify some key needs, uh, action for digitalization as well as opportunity for collaboration. The recording of the topic is now available online, so you may want to uh, you know go to the website and listen to them. Uh, of course, the plenary uh, is also online, so you can uh, watch the plenary uh, at the website. Today we will hear presentations from three different areas. The first is from the regional metrology organization. And the second one will be from the industrial digital infrastructure and the third uh, on digital representation of unit. So we'll start with the regional metrology. We are very pleased that there will be five uh, speakers from the metrology uh, from the RMO, uh, including APMP, EFRIMET, KUMET, EUROMET, and SIM. So the first uh, presentation will be from APMP. It will be about APMP and digital transformation. It will be delivered by uh, Dr. Takashi uh, Usuda, the Director General of NMIJ, and the Vice President of the Japan National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, or AIST. Dr. Usuda joined NMIJ uh, in 1990 and became the Director General uh, of NMIJ in 2017 and the Vice President of AIST in 2020. He is a CIPM member since 2012 and has served as the president of CCAUV and CCPR. Currently, she, he is the uh, CIPM secretary. His academic background covers MEM sensor, vibration acoustic measurement, photometry, and laser interferometry. The second presentation will be uh, on EFRIMETS and digital transformation uh, by Mr. Wakulu Mukufi. He is the CEO of the National uh, Metrology Institute of South Africa. Mr. Mukufi has a Master of Science in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology from the University of Limpopo and a postgraduate diploma in project management from uh, Canefield, manage, uh, Canefield College of Project Management. Mr. Ukufi has a wealth of experience uh, in scientific domain and technology industry. Uh, before joining NIMISA, he was the general manager uh, uh, in, in do, working on incubation and skill development for the Innovation Hub. Uh, the C, he was also the CEO of the South African Essential Oil Business incubator and the founding uh, production, uh, biodiesel production business uh, incubator. Mr. Mukufi started his career 
as a in a quality managed environment as a molecular diagnostic leader at the Agricultural Research Council Bacteriology Department. The third presentation uh, would be uh, on CoolMed vision of metrological e-infrastructure by Professor Nies Markov. Professor Nies Markov is the Director General of the National Scientific Center Institute of Metrology uh, in Kharkov, Ukraine. He studied radio electronics at the Kharkov University and did his Doctor of Science in standardization, certification, and uh, metrology and metrological support. He has some 40 years of experience in metrology and is also a professor at the Faculty Lighting, Engineering, and Light Sources in the Kharkov National University of Urban Economy. Professor Nick Markov is a CIPM member and the CIPM representative in the JCGM, uh, JCGM Work Group 3 WIM, as well as chair of the CCU uh, Work Group on Core Metrology Terms. He's the vice president of uh, CoolMed and chairperson of the CoolMed uh, TC4 uh, on information and training, as well as a member of the NCLSI Board of Directors. Fourth presentation will be on uh, metrology for digital transformation, uh, Euromed's vision and strategy by uh, Dr. Hans Arne Freunstein, the chair of Euromed. Uh, Hans Arne uh, studied physics and mathematics uh, at the Norwegian uh, Technical University in Trondheim. He joined JV, the Norwegian National Metrology Institute in 1987 as a metrologist in the electricity in electricity and thermometry. In 1992, he became the head of the National Met Metrology Laboratory. Of course, his tasks include planning the establishment of the new facility of JV in Scheller, uh, lecturing uh, at the University of Oslo. Uh, and also doing technical assessment for the Norwegian Accreditation Board. Uh, Hans Anne is the Deputy Director of JV and was the Acting uh, Director General uh, between 2015 and 2017. Since 2018, Hans Anne has been the Chairperson of Euromed. Uh, Last but not least, the fifth presentation will be on the metrology for digital transformation by Dr. Claire Sondre uh, from NIS. Uh, Dr. Claire Sondre has served as the director of the International Academic Affair since May 2007 uh, in NIS. Uh, Dr. Sondre's responsibility includes uh, managing the international academic portfolio in NIS, uh, implementation of NIS international strategy, managing NIS uh, foreign guest researcher and foreign visitor programs, uh, managing the NIS postgraduate, graduate and undergraduate research program, and the academic outreach activities. Uh, developing and implementing NIST international academic policies, providing liaison with foreign and uh, government and US government representative, as well as uh, also on university and local public system. In 2018, Dr. Sondre was elected the president of SIM, the Regional Metrology Organization of the Americas. And she was re-elected uh, president in 2020. So with that, uh, let's have a fruitful day uh, listening to the five presentation from the Regional Metrology Organization. Thank you.
Firstly, I would like to express my thanks to expert group and task group members of FAIR Digital for their effort to organize this workshop. My name is Takashi Usuda, Director General of NMIJ. Today, I will represent the APMP and provide some snapshots concerning digital transformation among our member NMIs. To begin with, let me introduce APMP briefly. Currently, we have 27 full members from Asia to South Pacific region. APMP also opens the door to other regional counterparts as associate members. So we also have 13 associate members outside of the region. Among the full members, there are 19 CIP MMRA signatories. As you see on the map, we have very large area geographically. The development stage of member institutes are very diverse from emerging state to well-developed one. Our objectives stated under MOU are to develop a closer collaboration, to improve the level of methodology, to encourage traceability, to ensure that measurement standards are traceable to the realization of the international system of units, and generally reinforce the objectives of the metric treaty, and to take care of the CIP MMRA. So if the metric system transfers into digital world, it is also our scope of activity under APMP. However, of course, we have priorities in our work program. The essential activity are to coordinate and implement CIP MMRA and to support quality infrastructure of member economies throughout the member institutes. We also establish and maintain initiative programs to support or to accelerate more specific issues. Such activities are reviewed at annual meetings. With reference to this workshop, APMP conducted a survey to collect information of all member NMI's DI's, totally 59 institutes, regarding their plans, activities, and challenges in the work relating to digital transformation. The questionnaire contains 19 questions asking such as government policy, potential needs, DX status, and concern. Although the short notice, 15 institutes responded to this survey. Thanks for that. It was expected, but we have little responses from emerging institutes which means under developing NMIs. This slide shows whether any activities concerning DX are undergoing or planned at the Institute. 13 institutes or 87% who responded to this survey answered yes to this question. Of course, there are a wide variety of progress from the scratch to conducting projects. Eight NMIs have already set up DX groups, web portals for calibration services, test reports, and the database are covered within these activities. Activities transforming conventional data format into machine readable data such as a digital calculation certificate are also included in these activities. This slide shows stakeholders, mainly considered in DX. The main drive force of DX 
is from industry, advanced manufacturing and transportation, energy sectors. With this portion, 41%. QI bodies and regulators for national quality infrastructure. More than half NMIs intended to engage with stakeholders, but a few have been involved in the concrete activities. Some NMIs have issued non-paper certificates. The most important issue is resource when we do something new. This pie chart shows whether you have personnel working on DX. Two thirds of institute have DX staff in some extent. NMIs have scientists, engineers working on data science, computer technologies, and IT. One NMI doesn't have specialized personnel, but some of their employees have IT literacy. Eight NMIs have or to have a programs funding for DX. Among them, one NMI has received a budget to set up a metrology system online. We also asked priority of DX topics identified as digital SOI, digital calibration certificate, digitalized document, document standards such as ISO IEC, traceable algorithm, remote calibration, metrology cloud. Digital SI and digital calibration certificate are prioritized in many NMIs. Many NMIs have not placed remote or embedded calibration technology at first priority but gave higher priority. Most NMIs agree to develop the most basic concepts digital SI and digital calibration certificate in DX first to develop more advanced applications. We asked expectations for APMP conducting DX. Identification of common interests on DX, coordination of efforts among NMIs, establish APMP guidelines on e-certificate, workshops and seminars to share the experience. Online workshop or seminars result in wider participation from members and to set up focus group on DX. We also see from the survey that no concrete role NMI assigned yet. Digital calibration certificate is one common image among NMIs but other concrete applications of DX are not clear yet. COVID-19 forced to work online and many NMIs take this as a chance to promote DX. NMIs are facing difficulties regarding resources, budget and manpower. To conclude my presentation, including my personal point of view, I would like to stress that we need a small but concrete or feasible model is needed. If we establish ground vision, we should identify stakeholders. We should specify values for them. Stakeholders like NMIs, of course, calibration laboratories, regulators, manufacturers, and users and is there any other stakeholders and expected benefits for them and expected resources from them. What is a new business expected? We need more discussions to carve out a solid model of the future with DX. Thank you very much for your kind attention and for further discussion. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen.
My name is Ndwakuru Mukufi. I am the CEO of the National Metrology Institute of South Africa. It is an honor for me to present this talk on AFRIMETS and the digital transformation on behalf of the chair of AFRIMETS, Prof. Dr. Mohamed Amer, who has um, fallen ill. I want to take this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to wish Dr. Amer a speedy recovery. Let me start off by giving you a few African facts. The continent has a population of um, just over 1.36 million by February 2021. This is expected to grow to just over 1.5 million by 2030 and projected to grow to just over 2 million people by 2050. The continent has 54 sovereign states and it is located in an area covering just over 30 million square kilometers. A few facts on um, connectivity um, on the continent. Mobile broadband is expanding fast in Africa. In Sub-Saharan Africa, as an example, 3G coverage has expanded to 75% of the population from a base of 63% in 2017. Looking at 4G coverage, this has doubled to nearly 50% since 2017. However, the coverage gap remains the highest in the world with 67% of those not covered by mobile broadband globally being located in Sub-Saharan Africa. Internet connectivity um, on the continent is um, primarily carried on the mobile platform with 9% um, of um, Central Africa and about 30% in Southern Africa using mobile internet. On the economic front, ladies and gentlemen, the primary driving force on, of, on economic growth on the continent is currently the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, which aims to create a one African market, which will um, result in an increase in total export, um, an increase in um, exports um, intra-continental, an increase in exports um, to um, non-African um, countries, which will add just over $450 billion to the um, continent's economy by 2035. Ladies and gentlemen, it is um, obvious to know that digital technologies and di digital tech, um, connectivity will be important to support this ambition. Just a little bit of information, ladies and gentlemen, on the um, AFRIMETS, the Intra-Africa Metrology System. The RMO was established in 2006 from a sub-regional RMO um, called Sadat Mect in the south. Um, currently, the RMO has 44 member states that are located in sub-regions based on the regional economic communities of um, Africa. Five members of um, AFRIMET have signed the META Convention and 10 are associate of the General Conference on Weights and Measures. AFRIMET um, as a whole currently has about 619 CMCs um, registered in the um, key comparison database. As I indicated, the RMO is organized in sub-RMOs to aid the organization and especially comparisons of um, national measurement standards. Um, the sub-regional RMOs do have 
hub NMIs in the sub-regions, such as Nemisa in South, in South Africa, Nice in Egypt, Kebs in Kenya, and Defnat in Tunisia. This um, realizes the SI and then distribute the traceability to the NMIs in their sub-regions. AFRIMED includes legal metrology, and this ensures excellent cooperation and collaboration between scientific and industrial metrology, as well as um, legal metrology on the continent. The potential for um, digitalization um, on the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a huge potential for digital technologies to assist the implementation of the Africa continental free trade area and assist networking and collaboration on the continent. NMI such as NIS, NEMISA, DEFNAT, CABS in Kenya are either participating in or planning digitalization of APRIMED's databases in preparation for the support of the implementation of the Africa Continental um, Free Trade Area. AFRIMED's members are mostly users of the digital technologies, although there are contributions to the development um, in areas such as remote and embedded um, calibrations. On digital certificates, working with the OIML and ILEC through AFRIMED and AFRAC, the member states are implementing digital certificates on the continent. There is a strong participation in the fourth industrial um, revolution activities. AFRIMED member states do participate in CIPM working group on data and digitalization activities at the international level, for example, with um, VAMAS. Ladies and gentlemen, that is in short the contribution of um, AFRIMED and the activities that are being carried in AFRIMED on um, digital transformation. Thank you very much for your attention. Dear colleagues, I'm pleased to greet, to greet you at this grand event. I'm happy to present you comet vision of metrological e-infrastructure digital transformation. I will speak about how comet view activities in ensuring the quality of measurement results, metrological traceability, metrological comparability, and metrological compatibility in the context of a transition to digital economy and this industry 4.0. I shall start with the role of me measurement in digital transformation economy. The first task is to eliminate barriers to digital transformation of economic sectors by developing an advanced measurements to improve robust and ambiguous representation of measurement units. Then, the increase in productivity and efficiency of complex measuring system and distributed sectors. In addition, due to increasing number and type of instrument used in the digital economy, we need the advanced metrology to meet evolving needs of new measurement, measurement areas. To realize all this, we need to make changes in the four areas presented on this slide like legislative, methodological, technical, and organizational. Very preliminary the direction of development are outlined here, which will change and uh, be refined as we move toward the digital metrology. On the way to achieve the set goals, Comet countries are adopting their national legislation. 
in Belarus, Kazakhstan, Russian Federation and Ukraine and other countries, relevant law, decrees and government decisions have been adopted already and are being adopted. When speaking about the challenges of NMI and digital transformation, the following can be pointed out as being the main ones. Firstly, more and more instruments require calibration and verification. As a result, the large amount of information is rapidly increasing. Secondly, the requirements for accuracy and meteorological reliability of measuring instrument are greater. Thus, the advantage development of the meteorological assurance is also required. Thirdly, intelligent system or smart meters require a fundamentally new approach to standardization. Moreover, the transition from paper document management to electronic one requires the establishment of operating electronic documents management system. Finally, a reliable exchange of information via internet which is closely related to the development of hierarchical meteorological e infrastructure has become especially important. To address the highlighted challenges, our top goals are machine readable representation of measurement data, traceability, comparability, and compatibility, and complete identification of measure, measurement data based on the FAIR principles reliability and confidentiality of measurement data, a reliable exchange of measurement data. When it comes to our objective, we may consider long-term storage and transfer of measurement data, uploading of new version of software for measuring instruments, remote comparison of measurement standards, instruments with embedded operated system, and the concept of thin client, reference software, reference test data, or even task, smart meter, monitoring, management, and maintenance of measuring instrument. Let's see what NMIs have to do on the way of the digital metrology. The current e-infrastructure of NMI is an intranet of one or more local networks or standalone personal computers and some web services behind the firewall. It is clear that for security purposes, it is dangerous to organize the access to measurement standards from outside, since there is no general concept for security access. And now I would like us to overview the use of digital uh, interface with a middleware called instrument elements. It has become an optimal environment to be used for effective performance of measurement tasks with the highest levels of measurement data transfer, storage and processing safety, opening new opportunities to track measurements results and ensuring a high level uh, reliability, integrity and confidentiality to these results. It provides the following functional requirement. Unified model of the measuring instrument, standard grid access to instruments, possibility of interaction between different instruments belonging uh, to different institutions and virtual organization. It should be noted that the instrument element can be not only a person, but also any application that had certain rights which are determined by an electronic or digital grid certificate. Here, you can see how it works. Left figure shows a uniform model of instrument control. Right figure shows a flowchart describing the instrument integration within the grid. Finally, we can observe proposed future e-infrastructure of NMI. Just like slide 7, this slide shows an MI intranet, but here we divide intranet into the VLANs for security reasons. To protect our intranet, we see that instrument element is separate VLAN. Now we can give the access to instrument element 
from the outside without endangering our inner network. So the grid security concept will be responsible for the instrument element security in the internet. internet. That is why we propose to make into account European grid infrastructure concept of grid computing. Let's see example. It has become necessary to transfer meteorological data, particularly from the digital calibration certificate into machine readable format. First, such digital data must comply with the FAIR principle, have the properties of the traceability, comparability, and compatibility, uh, and be digitally assigned to their complete identification. Therefore, we propose to, cre to creation of an electronic document management system for meteorological activities based on the experience of the digital transformation of research infrastructures. In conclusion, for DCC data storage, we propose to use a re ready-made data versa, which already implements FAIR principles, thanks to the interaction between European grid infrastructure and European Open Science Cloud, we can connect instrument element with the data versa. We are proposed to complete this solution with PKI-based digital signature. The details of the technical realization and solution are outlined in the reference articles I quote into the slide number eight. Thank you for your attention. Welcome all. My name is Hans Arne Föstein. I'm chairperson of Euromet, and I will talk about metrology for digital transformation, Euromet's vision and strategy. And the topics I will um, talk about is the Euromet strategy for 2030. I will talk about a European partnership on metrology, which is an upcoming proposed research program. And I will talk about the digital transformation. So Euromet is the RMO for Europe. And as other RMOs, we have the role of securing worldwide trust and acceptance of measurements for all aspects of business and society. We are an association established in Germany. Members are NMIs of 38 European countries, as you can see here, with more than 78 designated institutes as associates. In addition to the RMO basic core task, we also run the metrology research programs. The last 14 years, uh, a total of 1 billion euro has been uh, performed in research in collaboration between the participating countries and the European Union. And we don't do this just for the fun of metrology research, but in order to create impact by advancing measurement science for the good of business and society. So first, the strategy, it's under development and close to being finalized. There are some triggers and a changing context. One is the partnership I mentioned, where we are defining what is called an exit strategy. There will be no more such partnership later on. So we should become a self-sustained world-class European metrology infrastructure by 2030. Furthermore, there are several other triggers mentioned here are not the list here is not complete but the UN SDG the EC Green Deal initiative the EC strategy on our digital future the European industry strategy health challenges and opportunities the new SI with its associated technological developments and opportunities capacity building needs and the development of European maturity networks which are long-term structures within Euromed to support innovation, public policy, regulation. And a very strong stakeholder linkage is key. Here you can see the topics, the important topics that these cover. And the vision is for Euromed to be the leader in the development and application of measurement science, enabling Europe to be competitive, healthy, and sustainable through innovation. You can see the mission, which is about developing the 
measurement infrastructure to ensure its international competitiveness and recognition based on world-class R&D to support policy decision makers where metrology is key and to support our members. Objectives are derived from these. They are engagement of stakeholders, here EMNs are key, further develop the cooperation in R&D, REF, the new program under development to support quality infrastructure in Europe and international, to increase the influence and cooperation with European policymakers and national governments on regulation and to deliver high value to members and associates. It's close to being finalized and it should be presented for approval at the General Assembly of Euromat in June 2021. This is a glimpse of impact from the previous programs, research programs, quite substantial amount of work, cooperation and results, including innovation directly measured in terms of turnover. The partnership on metrology, which is under development and has been for a while, is meant to last from 2021 to 2027, established by cooperation between the European Union and participating states under the Horizon Europe uh, framework program. And the general objective of the partnership is to create by 2030 sustainable and effective system for metrology at European level that ensures Europe has a world-class metrology system for metrology competence and solutions for innovation and responding to societal challenges and to support effective design and implementation of regulation and standards. So these are very much well aligned to our strategy or vice versa. Things are changing and moving fast forward these days concerning approval process. We hope to have this in place in 2021. So a little bit into the general topics in digital transformation in metrology as we see it. It's about transformation in metrology services, our core business, if you like. It's about mathematics and confidence in data. It's about adopting open science for metrology, the key issue for this workshop, and connectivity and data quality in distributed systems. And we have defined a digital strategy, a sub-strategy, if you like, which has an overall aim, which is uh, ambitious. Euromet wants to take the lead in the digital transformation of the European quality infrastructure. And we will work towards this through these objectives, is to set the framework for members and associate and enable us to work in order to achieve this aim. We want to facilitate collaborative R&D for digital transformation and we want to develop links with peer organizations, external parties, other bodies of the quality infrastructure and others to cooperate with. And the implementation we have uh, so far, we have um, an interdisciplinary technical committee for coordination with, uh, with a working group here, which performs its task as a sort of a think tank specifically on digital transformation. We have dedicated projects in this technical committee for specific implementations and tasks under the coordination of the working group. And we also support and encourage the other Euromat technical committees and the Euromat EMNs for the field specific expertise on the technical committees and for topics driven by clearly identified and coherent stakeholder input for the EMNs. So the working group, it's uh, consisting of experts in this topic from Euromet members, is led by Sasha Eichstedt, whom you have met. It manages projects, organizes communications and organizes uh, workshops, etc. And um, I can mention a few examples here uh, on um, activities that has been going on or is going on. One is uh, digital on digital calibration certificates, where there is one um, MPEA project running called SmartCom, 
it's uh, going to be finished this year under a number of interesting results and we have uh, another internal project in Euromat in order to pick up the results of the research into implementation and coordinate this with the other uh, technical committees of Euromat so we can bring this up to, to use. Um, and also in the area of open science and R&D management, several research projects have been performed under the previous uh, framework program Horizon 2020 with open data since uh, many years back. And we have also internal projects in Euromat to pick up the latest achievements uh, for training courses in research data management and for project coordinator. Uh, in all our research programs, uh, projects, the, um, the openness of uh, data is, is a key issue and we need to cope with that. So then um, some uh, words on initiatives onward. Uh, Euromet is uh, now a member of the European Open Science Cloud. Uh, we have a focus on data quality and metrology principles to be used for fair data broadly. And sometimes we say fair plus X, where an X could be traceability or R, repeatability, which is uh, of high relevance. We see what we call a competence paradigm shift in NMIs, and there is a substantial need for capacity building among all our members, the uh, big and the small, the new and the old. We wish and need to have a strong cooperation with the other RMOs. So this is the right forum to say this. We are, we are ready to cooperate with you even more. We need to deploy more resources and make them available for this digital transformation. This is by member NMIs, by prioritizing their own missions and from Euromed side. And lastly, I would like to mention the the next partnership on metrology, where the first call is already this year. Uh, but we want to also prepare for digital oriented calls and actions in this uh, partnership in 2022 as a test bed and uh, most likely a broader call on digital transformation and metrology in 2024. More activities are underway as well, but this is as far as uh, I will bring you now. So thank you very much for your um, attention. My name is Claire Sondry, and I am currently serving as the president of the Sistema Interamericano de Metrologia, more commonly known as SIM. It is my pleasure to be here today to discuss the activities within SIM on metrology in support of digital transformation. I'd like to thank the BIPM, Dr. Joachim Ulrich, Director of the PTB and Vice President of the CIPM, as well as the Chair of this event, and the Conference Steering Committee for facilitating this dialogue among the metrology community and highlighting opportunities to engage our stakeholders in this important effort. I would also like to thank the chair and moderators of this session and the other speakers, my colleagues from the other regional metrology organizations for sharing your insights on the work being done in your regions. SIM became a legal entity in 2016 and currently has 31 active member national metrology institutes. These NMIs and their designated institutes or DIs have a diverse range of capabilities human and financial resources, responsibilities, and technical programs. A survey of our membership in 2018 emphasized the need to develop metrology capabilities in support of the digital transformation. A second survey conducted in the spring of 2020 and focused on NMI efforts to support COVID activities in their countries reinforce the need to develop and improve digital resources, capabilities, and services. In addition to the strong commitment and support of its membership, SIM has been very fortunate to have a long-standing support from external organizations. These organizations, like the Organization of American States, the Inter-American Development Bank, and the PTB have supported capacity building activities in the region for many years. 
Two projects listed here, supported by the IADB, are focused on advanced technology areas. The newest, which has been approved and is expected to be implemented later this year, is on metrology for digital transformation to support health services in Latin America and the Caribbean and address measurement challenges associated with pandemics such as COVID-19. The goal of this project is to achieve new digital metrology services with a focus on health-related areas, which are adapted to the conditions of the region and its countries and deployed to address emerging technologies that have come out of the COVID crisis. A focus on digital metrology resources for National Metrology Institutes and Designated Institutes, SIM, grew out of a series of discussions and workshops over the past few years, beginning in 2018 as SIM worked to develop the proposal for funding consideration by the Inter-American Development Bank, which as I previously mentioned was approved in 2020 for implementation later this year. As SIM was developing this proposal, we held a workshop in Bolivia in September 2019 during the week-long events scheduled around the SIM General Assembly. This workshop featured a presentation on the IDB strategy for digitalization of the economy in Latin America and the Caribbean, followed by NMI reports on their efforts to address the metrology challenges associated with digital transformation. In addition to generating ideas for the project proposal for the IDB, this workshop prompted the establishment of an informal working group of interested colleagues from the SIM community. When the second workshop planned for an in-person event in Buenos Aires in April had to be changed to a virtual format because of the COVID crisis, this working group stepped up to the task and helped organize the event. This event attracted over 170 participants and was a great success, not only for generating a dialogue among the interested NMIs and stakeholders on the, on the topics of digital transformation, but also for catalyzing this vibrant and active cohort of interested colleagues and NMIs within SIM. The workshop identified the following topics as priorities for the SIM region. Automation of laboratory processes, digitalization and legal metrology, digital calibration certificates, metrology for industry 4.0, and NMI's digital transformation strategy. The pandemic not only triggered the change from an in-person event in Argentina to a virtual workshop, it also changed the focus of the IDB call for proposals. And SIM, under the leadership of Dr. Hector Laiz, quickly worked to refocus the SIM proposal on metrology for digital transformation to address pandemic-related issues. The SIM Working Group on Digital Transformation continues to meet regularly, typically on a weekly basis, to implement the recommendations of the workshops. They have established six subgroups, each focused on one of the priority topics identified during the workshops. These subgroups provide a forum for participants to share information on their ongoing research and discuss areas of potential collaboration. Subgroup one includes 25 participants from 10 NMIs and DIs in SIM and is focused on sharing experiences in laboratory automation to define common areas for cooperation. Subgroup two is focused on legal metrology initiatives for digital transformation and includes 20 participants from 15 SIM NMIs and DIs. This group is surveying the SIM NMIs for their legal metrology initiatives and priorities. Subgroup three includes 25 participants from 15 National Metrology Institutes and designated institutes and is focused on digital calibration certificates. This group is benchmarking efforts currently underway across the region and discussing approaches to obtain digitalized data. Efforts focus on producing calibration records that are both human and machine readable. Subgroup four includes 13 participants from seven NMIs and DIs in SIM and is focused on exchanging information and experiences in Metrology 4.0 to define projects in areas such as remote calibrations, dynamic uncertainty, and machine learning. 
Subgroup 5 includes 22 representatives from 11 SIM NMIs and DIs, and its objective is to build a shared vision about digital transformation across SIM, to share knowledge and to orchestrate projects of mutual benefit. Subgroup 6 includes seven participants from three NMIs and DIs and is focused on developing the skills in the SIM metrology community to cultivate teamwork using agile principles, metro metrological knowledge, and the collaboration of national metrology institutes for projects towards digital transformation, with a focus on digital calibration certificates and a metrology cloud. All the subgroups will play a key role in the development and implementation of the new IDB project. Recognizing the importance of this effort and the strong commitment of the NMIs across SIM, in December 2020, the SIM Council approved the formalization of this working group under the SIM Technical Committee. This is now SIM Metrology Working Group 14 on Digital Transformation. The working group includes representatives of 20 NMIs in the region and is chaired by Hugo Gasca Aragon of SINAM, and Diego Copa of INTI is serving as the vice chair. SIM is committed to developing its capabilities in this important area, and we applaud the commitment of the members of this working group for recognizing the need to address these issues on a regional level. As noted before, this group meets regularly to not only share information on the challenges of the digital transformation, but to develop regional solutions. We are very excited about their efforts and continued contributions to digitalization and the NMIs in the Western Hemisphere. Again, I'd like to thank the steering committee and the committee organizing this session for the invitation to participate. I'd also like to thank the members of the SIM Metrology Working Group 14 on Digital Transformation for helping to prepare this presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That was a five Thank you. very that was a five Thank you. That was the five very interesting talk from the RMO. Uh, outlining some of the drivers and also needs for the digital transformation activities uh, in, the, in their respective regions. Uh, we have seen uh, varying uh, de degree of responses uh, and adoption of digital uh, transformation uh, technologies. Uh, there are varying plans uh, and nevertheless, I think in every of the RMO, we saw that there are uh, plans uh, going forward to establish uh, digital transformation activities uh, among the their members so uh, we are very pleased uh, today to have uh, three uh, distinguished panelists uh, representing the APMP region uh, Euromed and also SIM uh, to be with us uh, in this uh, discussion panel so uh, I will first have uh, uh, Dr. Takahashi Tak Takahiro uh, Moriaka introduce uh, himself. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Takahiro Moriaka. I'm here for on behalf of the Takashi Usuda for his uh, to respond to his presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, now, Hans, can you introduce yourself? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I forgot to say thank you for the kind invitation from the organizers and uh, I must say it's very nice to see you here uh, and uh, yeah my name is uh, as you said Hans van der Feuersten and I'm uh, chairperson of, uh, of Euromet uh, now. Yeah 
Thank you. And uh, Aldo? Uh, yeah, thank you, every, everyone, for this invitation. In behalf of Claire, uh, I want to present myself. Uh, my name is Aldo Garcia, and I lead the effort of Agile projects for the SIN airport. Yeah, thank you, Aldo. So uh, for this panel discussion, uh, thank you, uh, you know, all of you for posting some very interesting uh, questions already in the chat box. So uh, without further ado, uh, Victoria will uh, post the questions to our panel. Victoria, please. Thanks, Tom. Um, we had a, a bit of a question which has also been echoed from the audience from Juria. Um, and that is what kind of, or how might we all collaborate across um, RMOs for fair digital data? I know that both Hans and Claire spoke a lot in their talks about um, wanting to connect with the other regions. So be interested to hear the perspectives from the panelists on that. So we can start with anyone who, who might want to chip in. I can I can chip in a little bit perhaps since I mentioned this also in my in my presentation um, to uh, f first of all I what you see now and what we understood from uh, from uh, earlier also is that we are all sort of in a, in a kind of a developmental phase and we face many of the same uh, challenges so that's a good reason for starting cooperation. I think also there's in some of these topics, there is a clear need to harmonize what we do. Uh, I mean, we have customers who are operating across RMOs, etc. And um, harmonization, for instance, on, on um, digital calibration certificates is clearly uh, uh, an interesting topic. And uh, I could also fill in a little bit more about the partnership I presented that this is uh, moving forward now. Yesterday morning, it was actually proposed formally by the European Commission, so this is moving fast. And uh, when I described it, it was partnership between European countries and the European Union, but it's a partnership also which will be open. So there will be possibilities for cooperation across the world. Uh, rules and uh, the mechanism for this is still to be uh, developed, but but certainly um, this is a possibility for for many of you. And um, uh, yeah, digitalization is a topic which will be clearly um, found in in there. So there are many opportunities to to um, to cooperate. I think I stop there. I think. <laughs> Thank you, Hans. Sorry, I was just going to ask Aldo if he had a perspective. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Victoria and, and Hans, for the answer and, and your comments. Um, here at the Sim region, we we saw the necessity to to start to share uh, the knowledge about the digital transformation regarding a workshop that we uh, have uh, last year. Um, and uh, we saw that uh, in other RMOs, uh, they are working at the same airport. Actually, other uh, organizations have uh, uh, very advanced topics about digitalization, and we saw the necessity to, to keep the, the following steps in order to have all the, the information uh, needed. To, to work in a strategy that works with all the national meteorology institutes of the region, same region, and establish a very defined uh, subgroups that were, uh, will work together in order to achieve uh, very specified um, topics like uh, Industry 4.0, uh, Digital certi Calibration Certificate, um, uh, Metrology Cloud, for an example, and uh, agile projects in, in this subgroup. So we we define and we saw that we need to make um, a very collaborative effort around uh, different uh, national early institutes and 
different RMOs, RMOs to, to have a very, very unified idea of uh, what we want at, in, in this collaboration. So this is my answer. So maybe it's time for me. Yeah. <laughs> so the in elements of this workshop, the LBMP has conducted a survey distributed to the old NMIs and the DIs of APMP. And uh, we have actually the 59 NMIs and the DIs of the, as the members of the APMP, and we had 17 responses from them. So that means the, some of the NMI have very high level activity in the DX, but most of them are not. In the APMP looking at the survey result, the, I realized that we have very variety of stages of the DX and some of the NMIs uh, pointed out First, APMP should uh, identify the common interest of the DX digital transformation topic. And this, this is a very early stage of the, the DX uh, trans, digital transformation for the AP, in the APMP region. So there, it may be a good idea to collaborate and harmonize uh, all the uh, recognition of the importance of the topic of the DX. That is uh, all I have now. It is very difficult to define it. I know that's all I have. Thank you. So Victoria, you can proceed with the next question. <laughs> yep, sure. We, we had a question from uh, Mr. Tsui from uh, Hong Kong which was um, to support digitization in metrology institutes, expertise in IT such as programming and data security are required. Most metrologists do not have such training. Are there any suggestions how we can bridge that gap from the panel? Uh, I will like to say something. Yeah, um, for that uh, question, uh, at the SIM region, uh, we are defining the strategy to achieve um, readiness level of all uh, national metrology institutes. Uh, we want to have uh, a similar level of uh, knowledge in different uh, topics of uh, digital transformation. So uh, these uh, subgroups of the effort of metrology for digital transformations works in order to to measure in, in some way the readiness level of the NMIs. So they send a survey. We are defining, um, we, we want to define the, the strategy if, if with a survey we can measure the readiness level of those, those national metrology institutes and then with the results uh, apply some strategies to, to define which of these NMIs have uh, better uh, knowledge about uh, a specific topic of digital transformation and this national metrology institute can share this information maybe with some um, training or some videos to, to, to share the information and the other NMIs that doesn't have this knowledge learn uh, more about the, that and the other strategy that we are discussing right now we don't have a very clear, clear line to, to 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 work with that uh, the other the other uh, possibility is with the agile projects with these uh, agile projects we establish a model uh, and a structure to work with different nmis to develop uh, value uh, the value uh, projects with very clarified uh, features to, to develop some application or to develop some documents or, or anything that we, we propose at the coordination group of Agile projects. So we are thinking of these 
to possibilities to to, to achieve a, a very homogeneous uh, knowledge about digital transformation topics. Thank, thank you, Aldo. May I add, uh, you know, in uh, Claire's uh, presentation, I, I saw one part where she mentioned that uh, in terms of uh, getting the NMIs to be ready, they are training in management of digital transformation for the NMI. Can you elaborate on what kind of uh, training uh, SIMS is uh, planning for that area? Uh, right now, we are uh, working in that part, uh, harder of the digital calibration certificate and uh, the metrology cloud. Uh, but uh, right now, we don't have, uh, we are working on that part. This is like, uh, um, then uh, the team is uh, making an effort to to develop projects, to do two kind of projects. One is in order to digital transformation, and the other one is uh, about health uh, topics uh, regarding the COVID-19. So uh, right now, and the, the answer is that we are working in that part, but uh, for sure, when we have uh, all this established, we can share with you, but right now is, is work in progress. We are dis discovering how to, 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 to do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And and Hans, uh, in your presentation, I, I saw something on uh, the uh, competency paradigm shift. Can you uh, elaborate uh, to us what do you mean by that uh, competency paradigm shift that is needed to successfully do digital transformation? Yes, I used that term and it was uh, mentioned by some colleagues uh, from other in institutes in Europe that even, um, even among the more experienced and advanced uh, NMIs, they see clearly a need for a, a very strong or major change or update in competence in some of these topics. I mean, um, um, laboratory automation and some mathematical competence is already well developed in many of the NMIs, etc. But some of these topics that we talk about now for the real digital transformation, uh, IT security, the metrology cloud, etc. These are uh, areas where where we don't have enough competence within the, the metrology community, I think. So, so our idea is that it, at least in in some instances we should also link up with um, digital expertise outside the metrology world. I think this is uh, this is needed, uh, and I guess this is would be the same uh, across the the other RMOs as well. Mm. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Victoria, right. can you share? I was just wondering if Takahiro had a perspective on that from the APMP angle. Uh, in the APMP, so as I explained, so we have we are in the very early stage, so we have to set up a working group or a focus group on digital transformation and the collector information. And we start we designed the next steps to uh, realize this the transformation. That, that is the first step we have to take. And I guess yeah. there's a comment in the chat from Angela, the DEC chair in APMP, who says that um, within uh, the DEC, they've started their future proofing task force, which Jaria is chairing. Um, which will we'll deal with some of these issues from the DEC perspective. Um, another question um, that's come through from the chat from, from Daniel Uchinreiter from um, PTB, which is lovely. Um, what would be success stories uh, from RMO cooperation in the past that we can draw on to learn um, or to learn from to help us with the future cooperation in digital transformation? Um, does anyone 
maybe Hans, do you have a, any thoughts about that? Past success stories of RMO yeah, cooperation? Success stories. I'm guess, I guess there are many. <laughs> we are we are cooperating well in many ways, but uh, I'm not quite sure which one would be. I mean, we do have these. Um, we do have these uh, all, all that work uh, associated to the CIPM MRA. There are many elements in there where we have found good solutions together. I think perhaps uh, the initiatives from the CIPM or BIPM is probably good. They 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 showed yesterday they have taken some initiatives on. On, um, for instance, the accessibility to the KCDB and the user calibration certificate, so that they sort of join forces like they do now and um, on some of these projects would be, would be very good. Yeah. And Aldo, Tim? Yeah, um, for seeing the side, uh, we are uh, working on that actually. This, this year we are uh, beginning the, the effort of this kind of project. So we are discovering uh, if we have, we're going to have success. We hope we do, but um, we, are, we are learning from you, you, the other NMIs, and that's the answer. Thank you. And Kak, any thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, we have lots of cooperation in the management level. Uh, our chairs and the core team managers are connected in the JCRBs. And uh, every, every, uh, each NMI uh, uh, personnel has uh, attended in the CCs on the, the BIPM and the TCs in the APMP and other regions. So we have lots of connections. So it, we have to think about the level of cooperation first. And then we can find some cooperation in the GX, the, the digital transformation, I think. Yeah, thank you. I, I think that was a, a great question. Uh, uh, certainly, you know, digital transformation in some sense is a quite a bit of a new uh, world for the NMI, for some M NMI. Uh, and uh, we can certainly learn from some of the mechanism that we have uh, in the past uh, uh, in inter-RMO collaboration, particularly uh, what was mentioned was the CIPM and MRA and, and uh, at the uh, CIPM and also the BIPM, uh, there is already uh, initiatives and programs that are uh, being discussed and launched uh, that will facilitate some of this uh, collaboration in the future. Right, and and I think one of the area, you know, just following on on what we just discussed about the paradigm shift in the competency and the uh, skill uh, needs and so on, uh, that's already an example where uh, you know cross the uh, RMO uh, discussion and and workshop and so on would be very useful. Thank you. Yeah. So Victoria, perhaps we can have. One of one more question. I think we're out of time, Tom. Yeah. Okay. So we we first of all let me thank you know our gracious panelists uh, for answering uh, so many of your questions. Uh, I apologize that uh, because of the you know uh, time uh, limit we could not uh, get through all your questions. Uh, but uh, rest assured, uh, the question will be, uh, you know, collected and then uh, addressed uh, uh, individually and perhaps to the person who has uh, also uh, posted the question uh, by the speakers or the panelists. So thank you uh, very much uh, for joining us uh, this morning in this uh, panel discussion. And uh, we should uh, come back for our next uh, topic uh, in 2.30 uh, UTC, so it's about, you know, uh, 30 minutes from, sorry, uh, yeah, about 15 minutes from now. I'll come back at 2.30 UTC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.